2 Timothy chapter 3. This was probably the last book that Paul wrote before he went to be with the Lord. He's in prison. He's writing to Timothy, the one who is his son in the faith, he calls him, had journeyed with him on missionary activity and so forth. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Take a look at what it says. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Now let's stop right there and I want to tell you something. That word perilous times, what does that mean? Perilous times. Oh, well, times of peril. Well, sure. Well, what's interesting is that Greek word is only used twice in the, in the New Testament. Once is here. The other time is the story of the demonic possessed man who lived in the tombs in Gadara, which was across the, the Sea of Galilee from where Jesus and, and, and uh, everybody was in Capernaum. On the other side, he lived in the tombs. Nobody could, nobody could chain him up. He'd break the chains. He was demon possessed. He was totally out of his mind. And he, this is the word used to describe him. It's, it's, I think in most translations, it's, he was exceptionally violent. That's what this word is. This is a powerful word. Perilous, I don't know, it sounds too much like pearls, maybe. It, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound that bad. Okay, it's going to be perilous times. No, it's going to be bad. It's going to be really bad. Why? Well, because men will become lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And now listen to this. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people turn away. You see, it's very possible for us to get into a situation of having a form of godliness. Man, I got my Bible. I got a couple Bibles. I open it on several occasions. I go to church. I tithe regularly. I'm very involved in the activities of the church. Got all this stuff. To have a form of godliness and yet not allowing the power of the risen Jesus Christ to be making an effect in our lives. You see, Jesus didn't establish his church so there'd be a cool religion. Hey, we need a new religion. How about Christianity? Kind of different. Now, that wasn't the whole idea. It wasn't to form an organization. It was so that the power of the risen Lord Jesus Christ could be effected into our lives so that we might be saved, so that we might come into communion with God because you know what? There's no other way. We're talking about this on, on Friday night at the Bible study. Jesus prayed. Jesus, the most pure, the most holy, the most righteous, prayed and said, Father, if there's any other way than going to the cross, can we do that? Now, do you think Jesus' prayers would be answered? I hope so, because he's praying for me and he's praying for you. But Jesus also said, but not my will, your will be done. There was no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And that is, is what God, through Jesus Christ, wants to do in your heart and in my heart. is to cause a resurrection to happen. Not just once when we first come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but every day, living a resurrected life, seeing more and more of our lives coming under the lordship and dominion and kingship of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. So that today, we are farther in the faith than we were yesterday and last week and last year. That's God's intention for us. He doesn't want a bunch of people who know how to talk Christianese. Oh, you know it. All the praise of the Lord, all the amen, all the, you know, all these things. No, he wants people, people whose lives have been radically changed and resurrected by his power. Form over substance. 
Look out for it because it's one of the signs of a showman. Second sign, calling on God when convenient. And you could read convenient as meaning when there's trouble. Do you know people like this? I do because usually they call the church and, and, and they ask to see the pastor and it's someone I've never seen before in my life. Now, please don't take this like, oh, well, I better not call the pastor anymore. He's going to think like I'm, I'm not really in the Lord. No, please call, call, write, email, come to church, see me after church, see me before, come on Tuesday, come on Wednesday. That's what we're here for. That's the mission that God has given us to fulfill here. A lot of people begin a conversation with me, especially who, who are familiar with the church and so forth, and they begin it with, I'm sorry to bother you. I know you're really busy. And I, 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 know, I know the heart that is saying that. And so I, I usually just respond with something like, oh, that's okay, please, anytime. But really inside I'm kind of going, don't you realize that this is what I'm here for? This is what the pastor is about. The pastor is to be leading the sheep. God spoke very clearly a couple of weeks ago to me in prayer from Proverbs 24, 11, which talks about saving those from being, deliver those from death and hold back those who are stumbling towards the slaughter. There are a lot of people in this world who are just going along and they don't know that what they're doing is destroying them. And we as believers and me as a pastor, it's my calling, it's my job, it's my reason for being created and put in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania of all places to do, to reach out to those who need whatever it is they need. And so don't hesitate to call. And yeah, my schedule is kind of crazy because I do work a full-time job and so hours are limited, but call, write, send an email. Hey, we can get together at three o'clock in the morning if you're up for it. But one of the signs of a showman is calling on God only when there's trouble. That's when prayer happens. That's when calling on the Lord. Now I gotta tell you, you probably already know this. And that is, your prayer life usually gets a lot better when you're in trouble, doesn't it? Have you noticed that? Things are going bad, and man, you start really calling out to the Lord like, you know, it's not one of these kind of nice little short, you know, God, just whatever you want to do. No, it's, Lord, help me, please. We had a quick prayer this morning when you heard the story about Corey and then the phone goes dead and then there are these weird messages coming through on the phone and I've got my Blackberry that I had never turned off before. I, I never turned it off. I just, you know, always kept it going. And last night it kept blinking because it was low on battery and I had it plugged in, but it kept blinking. And, and it's sitting right next to my bed and it's blinking green and I'm going, I can't take this. So I turned it off and I realized I had never turned it on before. And I didn't know how. <laughs> For those of you on the internet, I'm really stupid. <laughs> I'm looking at this thing and on my old phone, you hit the power off button and it turned it on when you hit it once, when it was off. And I'm, I'm hitting that, nothing's happening. I'm hitting all the other buttons. Turns out there's a button on the top that's like right into the same shape as the Blackberry. And, uh, and unless you know it's there, you'll never find it. I finally found it, but it was much later. It was after we got here. So I have no phone. Chris is not being able to get through to Corey. I'm going, okay, I'm going. She says she's near Green Tree. I'm getting in my truck and I'll find her. Green Tree's not that big. And so uh, as you heard, the Lord was in control. But that prayer we prayed while Chris is still on the phone, just hearing, hi, this is Corey's cell phone. Please leave a message. That prayer was intense. It was, Lord, help. Help us get through. Help if she's stuck on the highway. Keep her safe. Set your angels around. It was intense prayer. That's what happens when we're in trouble. 